Greetings, everybody. This is Winnie Riggle, and welcome back to our Direwolf 20s 1.16 mod pack. Let's play. We're in episode 15, and we're going to start off today's episode with a little bit of show and tell. As you may recall, in the last episode, we got a fancy new backpack, so we can do this. Fly! Yay! Which means I've been having fun building with flight. Nothing too exciting, but I have been working on the dead spaces between our different floors of the ravine base. For example, right here above uh, the dark scoria that I finished in the last episode, I've added some greenery. I've also in the back of that greenery added a couple of cool blocks. Yes, those are watermelons. The others are bamboo blocks. These are actually added by the thermal series of all thing, and it's just literally a block of bamboo. Sugarcane also has a block variant, which looks pretty cool. And those are also tucked away in here as well. The lights are shroom lights from our various gardens, and I think it's coming along very well. I will definitely use this again to hide some of the boring stone that's between our levels. Here is the other new building area I wanted to show off. We saw the bare bones of this last time, but this is the new workshop. So it is a combination of a crimson stem from the nether and the blazing archwood log. Those are the trees that are scattered throughout the overworld from Ars Nouveau. And I added, I used the windows from Macaw's windows. They're very cool. And they also have crimson blinds. So I basically just put some lights back there and then more of these leaves that are also from the Ars Nouveau tree, uh, the blazing archwood. Just a note on these leaves, you cannot use shears. You'll need silk touch to actually collect them. It took me a while to figure out. Anyway, I thought it would be nice for this to look like there was an outside, even though it's built into the side of a mountain, thus the fake windows. I've put them way up out of reach because we're going to have a bunch of machines and all kinds of stuff down here eventually, and I didn't want to ruin our beautiful decorations. While we're down here, let's go ahead and check on the iron farm that we made last time. I've been hearing golems do their thing. <laughs> Look at that. This iron is super important for the plans I have today. We are going to do something about our abysmal storage situation. And there's another golem as we speak. We're we'll leave these guys to their noisy iron production. And I want to show you the space that I have prepared for the actual storage part of our storage solution. So directly above us, if I pop up on the elevator, we're in our treehouse. If I pop down, we're in the new workshop area. If I go down one more, ta-da, big empty room. This is where we are going to put a whole bunch of storage drawers. We're going to use two types of storage drawers. First, just the regular storage that we've done, for example, in our mob farm to hold items like trees and wood and organics and anything that we have in bulk. I'm also going to make a ton of these compacting drawers. These are amazing. They're a little expensive. It's two pistons and some iron ingots and stone for each one, but they will hold all of our ingots and blocks and even better, you can pull either an ingot or a block from them and the storage system doesn't care which it is. We'll also be making a drawer controller just like we did in our mob farm so that our storage system can access all of the items in the drawers down here. Now let's head back upstairs and get to crafting. Woo. That's so fast. I love it. We have a couple of options for storage in this pack. We do have refined storage, which I love. And eventually we will migrate to a refined storage system. We also have applied energistics. And then there is the rather less frequently used, but equally powerful storage options that are available from RF tools. I love this system. There are two key components. One is a storage scanner. This is a machine. Basically, it will act as your user interface to all of your storage. It also has a crafting component to it. It lets you see all nearby inventories, whether they're literally chests 
sitting within range of the block or they're connected using XNet. And we, of course, are going to connect all of our various storage locations using XNet. The other key blocks are called modular storage blocks themselves. Think of them as very powerful, configurable chests. At their most advanced configuration, which would be, so you can have tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four, a tier four storage module holds 500 stacks of items. So we'll be making a few of the modular storage blocks to serve as giant chests, if you will, and one storage scanner along with all of the upgrades. The RF tool storage system also has wireless capability. You can make a tablet and add a storage control screen module to it to link it to a storage system. So we will have wireless access to our storage system from anywhere. And that's part of the reason I'm going down this route. Okay, let's start our crafting with the bulk storage that we need to do. And that is all of our storage drawers, a drawer controller, and some compacting drawer. The drawer controller is first. We need stone, a couple of redstone comparators, and a diamond. We also need one regular storage drawer, which I think let's just use one I've crafted before. Yeah, that would be great. So we can make a drawer controller. That's one key item. Now we need to make a whole bunch of compacting drawers. They require a drawer in part of their crafting. So let's start by making a bunch of plain drawers. 63, 64. So now let's turn those into compacting drawers. And to do that, we're going to need two stacks of pistons. There's another 64 pistons. Okay, so we have our two stacks of pistons, our stack of storage drawers. So here go our compacting drawers. We need five stacks of stone, a stack of iron. There we go. 64 compacting drawers. Woohoo! Now let's move on to our birch drawers. I'm going to use birch because they are easy to see items in because the wood is very pale. So we'll need a whole bunch of chests, which I'm just going to use this magic recipe for. Love this. Let's go ahead and do a stack. And then if we convert our birch. I think a whole stack is a good place to start. So we have a stack of birch drawers, a stack of compacting drawers and a drawer controller. I think I might want to make one more drawer controller and treat these two collections of drawers as separate storage areas. So let's make one more drawer controller. There is another drawer controller. We are also going to need another item called birch trim. This allows you to connect sets of storage drawers around corners so that you don't have to use an actual storage drawer to do it. So it's just birch planks with some sticks. And I don't know that we'll need a lot. Probably half a stack is plenty. Let's run downstairs and set up our drawer systems. Ta -da! So I think our compacting drawer system with all of our ores and ingots and blocks of materials is going to be one of the largest. So we'll go ahead and put it on this side of the room. We'll begin by setting down the drawer controller. And I like to leave one block behind the systems in order to give us room to work. So there's the controller. I'm going to go out five on either side. And then we're just going to go up from there. One of the keys to this is making sure that you can reach a drawer. Not that you necessarily will be interacting with them all the time. But I like to keep them no more than four blocks high. If we need to turn the corner and add more, we would put trim and then continue our rows of compacting drawers out to the side. Back here, we will connect this drawer controller using XNet to the rest of the storage systems. Now let's do the same thing on this side of the room. I think we'll 
err on the side of putting our drawer controller right in front of us when we come down the elevator and then put our miscellaneous storage drawers here. Same is true here. I'm only going to go up by four drawers to be sure I can reach them. We'll use trim in the corner so that we can turn the corner and put the rest of our drawers in. That should be good and sufficient for anything that we have that we want to store that's stackable so that we don't want to use up our storage modules for. Now let's go craft up the components from the RF tools storage system and XNet so that we have access to this from anywhere. Here is everything we're going to need to do our crafting from RF tools and XNet. It's a lot of stuff. I would say in terms of resources, it is a little bit pricey, but part of that is because I'm planning on going up to tier four storage modules, which require infused diamonds and blocks of diamonds. If you were just gonna do up to tier two, for example, which hold 200 stacks, and that's amazing, they're very inexpensive. They're just gold, quartz, and redstone with a tier one, and tier one is just a couple pieces of quartz gold nuggets, a chest, an iron ingot, and some redstone dust. Very, very affordable. First, we're going to need a storage scanner, which is a couple of ender pearls, a machine frame, some redstone torches, and gold. And there we have a storage scanner. The storage scanner will require power, just FYI. Now we need the modular storage pieces themselves, and we're going to make three of these. So we'll need three machine frames. One, two, three. Now, they don't do anything unless you put a storage module in them. So right now, that's just an empty box. And it says in the tooltip, you must first insert a storage module item before you can use it. So each of the storage module items requires the tier before it. So we'll start by crafting three tier ones. And then three tier twos. And three tier threes. And three tier fours, but first we need to make infused diamonds. They are very easy. It's just a diamond surrounded by dimensional shards. So we're going to make three tier fours. So we need two of these infused diamonds for each one. So we need six infused diamonds. There we go. Now we can make our tier four. One, two, three. So now we have tier four storage modules. So let's just take a look at these real quick. If I set down a modular storage block, so if we right click on the modular storage block, add the tier four card to it, so now it will hold 500 stacks of items. In order to access the items or put items in here, we need to lock the module slots. And so now I can put all the stuff that's in my inventory into the storage. And it can be, I'm just gonna throw everything in my inventory in here. And you can set the configurations as a list, a column, or just items. You can see what's in here. And then it, for example, if we wanted to craft another storage module, we could do it right here. And there's another one. So it's JEI enabled for free and no power. So it's a chest with a built-in crafting mechanism. I really like this mod. You can also sort different ways based on name or count. So this is just the plain modular storage. What we're gonna do is put a bunch of these with a storage scanner. So I'm going to pull that storage module out, I'm going to pick up our storage module, and now we want to craft the XNet components that we need in order to connect everything together. So we need an XNet controller, which means we need another machine frame, 
We already have the repeaters and comparators crafted. So there's our controller. We'll also need a connector for every block we want to connect in the system. And these are a fairly simple recipe. We're gonna go with the blue connectors and blue network cables this time. How about 12 in case we need to add other storage systems like our mob farm to this one network. So there are 12 blue connectors. Now we also want to make some blue network cables. They are string, blue dye, gold nuggets, and redstone dust. And I think a stack and a half should be plenty for connecting everything up. The last two things we want to craft are a tablet, which can be used to reference remote GUIs and information. And that is, it's a little bit pricey. It's an emerald, a block of quartz, and some redstone. And we also want to make a storage control screen module. This allows us to connect the tablet to our storage system. So we'll take both of those things with us. And let's head downstairs to the workshop and try to set everything up. Okay, we are down in our workshop area. And I have moved over our dimensional cell slightly just to center it on the windows. Because I think that might make me and some of you crazy if we don't. And the first thing we want to do is set down our storage scanner. I'm just going to set it right on top of the dimensional cell so that it gets power. Then we want to put our three modular storage blocks very close to this. So I'm just going to clear these out and set them right here where we can access them if we need to. Although most of our access will be through this interface. If we right click on the storage scanner, it brings up the UI. Here in this lower part of the screen is one of the most important areas. This is where the scanner will, you can dictate what radius it scans to find items. So if we put it up at a tall radius, you can see it can see everything within 10 blocks, which is cool, but that's kind of not what we want. If you slide this bar all the way to the left, you get the option of XNet, and that's what we want. If we were setting up a really simple one, we could set the radius to one and look, it can see all three of those modular storage units and I can tell it that I don't want it to include the dimensional cell by clicking R once I've highlighted it. So now it'll just include those three modular storage blocks. But we're going to go the XNet route. So until we hook things up using XNet, it won't be able to quote unquote see them. First thing you want to do for each of the modular storage blocks is make sure that they act as storage. And to do that, we want to put storage modules in them. You can either shift click into here or put it over here in the UI. So this will now become a tier four storage module. These act like keys, if you will. So the first thing we want to do is lock that module into that slot so that this becomes storage. So for example, I can put stone in here now and we'll actually leave that there because that's a good indicator. We want to do that for all three of these. I'm just going to put the little storage modules in here and lock them so that the module becomes active. And the next thing we want to do is hook all this up to XNet so we can also Hook it up to our storage items downstairs. So I'm just going to stick the XNet controller right next to the dimensional cell so that it gets power easily. And now we want to add connectors to every block we want to interface with the storage system. So let's take our XNet connectors and let's go ahead and put a connector on the back of every modular storage block. We're going to put one on the back of the storage scanner itself. I'm going to put one on the back of the XNet controller because that's the brains of this network. I'm also going to go ahead and put one on the back of the power cell in case we need it. And then let's sneak down here and we're going to just connect these with cable. There's that. Let me run downstairs and duck behind here. We should be seeing our cable come down. Yes. So remember XNet has to have cable to connect everything and a connector on every block you want to interact with. So we're 
putting a connector on the drawer controller for our miscellaneous drawers. And then I'm going to run XNet cable. Well, I'll clean this up and hide it under the floor later. This is just to demonstrate how it works. This is our drawer controller. So we want to put a connector on this drawer controller. And I will show you, I've gone ahead and put just some example items in our compacting drawer and in our miscellaneous drawers, just so that we can see them in the storage system. So that's everything hooked up. All of the wires and cabling are connected and they go up to our storage scanner. Now, because this is an XNet system, we need to go to the XNet controller and set up storage system. So we're going to go into the UI, select channel one, and we're going to create a storage channel. So I'm just going to pick storage. And in fact, it says RF tool storage from the list, say create. And I'm going to give this channel a name called storage. And we're only, we're going to start with the block that is the brains of our quote unquote storage system. And that is our storage scanner. So I've selected it and I want to create, and this we're going to set, you can set it either to inventory or storage. This block we're going to set to storage because it is the storage scanner for this system. The other blocks are going to be inventories. So for example, this first modular storage system, we want to create the channel. We're going to leave it set to inventory. This one, we also want to create and leave it set to inventory. And this one we want to set to create and leave to inventory. Next up are our drawer controllers. One for our ingots and things that can be compacted and the other for miscellaneous items. We want to set both of these to as inventories so that the system can see them. And then we aren't including the power or the XNet controller in the storage channel. So we'll leave those alone. If we wanted to create an energy channel to manage the power between everything we could, we can just leave it on XNet energy, create it. Our source would be the dimensional cell. So we make it an extract from the dimensional cell and then insert into both the controller and the storage scanner. So now we have a channel called energy because we can name it and it'll manage the power for the two blocks in the system that need it. If we've set that up right, when we right click on our storage scanner and select XNet, you can click the slider bar is a button that activates the scan. Now we can see all five of those blocks that we've added to the system. So if I highlight this drawer, you can see the contents that are in that storage drawer system. So this is our ores and ingots and stuff. The next one I've put, remember, wood and trees and sticks. So we can see that. Modular storage. This one seems empty. This one has stone in it. And this other one is empty. Some of the things you can do are reorder the storage sources that you have. You can do that by just moving an inventory up. So I've moved this inventory up. This actually prioritizes your storage options. So if you want things to go into this modular storage before they go into these two, move it up in the list. Now, the other thing you want to make sure you do is in order for you to be able to put things back into a storage area, they have to be routable. Right now, none of these are routable. So we can take stuff out. There, I grabbed some iron ingots, but I can't send it back in. It just sits there. It's like, I don't have anywhere to go. I can't go back to my home. So to make that routable, we want to click this. Now you'll see that star says routable. Now, when I stick iron back in this inventory, you'll see it disappears and goes back into the storage system. So we want to make sure that anything we want to be able to put materials back into is routable. So we'll make all of these first three routable. For now, let's leave the other two unroutable because they're empty. There's nothing that can go back in there. So if I wanted to start filling up this generic storage with other items like my XNet things, it should go. Oh, it's going to go into the drawer controllers because they're not locked. Ha! Okay, let's take those out. Give me those. Give me those. 
because our drawers aren't locked, it's going to go into the miscellaneous drawers. That's pretty funny. So lock your drawers if you don't want stuff to go back into your drawer systems first. The last thing we want to do is, wouldn't it be cool if we could access this all remotely from anywhere? The good news is we can because we've crafted a tablet and a storage control screen module. So I'm going to take the screen module and shift right click on the storage scanner and you'll see we get the message storage module is set to block storage scanner. Now, if we take our tablet and shift right click on empty air, you'll see that we can put a bunch of things in here. I want to put that storage control screen module in here. And now we have a tablet that is connected to our storage system. If I go over here and right click, look, there's all our stuff. I love this storage system. It is super easy to set up. It requires very little power and it holds everything you have and it connects to anything you want remotely. I will probably add a wireless connection to our mob farm item so that we can access all of those from this terminal as well as our tablet. I mean, we have access to our storage system from anywhere. Look, I right click it. I access the storage. I'm not even standing in front of it. That's the best. And I think with that, that's everything we have time for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, leave a like. It helps me out and I appreciate it. If you'd like to keep up with what's going on in the channel, don't hesitate to subscribe. And remember, as always, you are the shiny stuff that awesome is made of. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.